Real Time 1960s presents Evening Report, a complete roundup of today's news with Joe Rubenstein. Good evening. In Seattle, President Kennedy speaks out on the Cold War. In the Congo, 13 UN peacekeepers are slain. The National Security Council approves the president's Vietnam policy. A young girl is rescued after drifting in the Atlantic for three and a half days. Singer Ray Charles is arrested. Gangster Joseph Gallo is found guilty. And Speaker Sam Rayburn is dead. Those are the headlines, the details after this message. Hello, I'm Walt Disney. You've probably heard people talk about conservation. Well, conservation isn't just the business of a few people. It's a matter that concerns all of us. It's a science whose principles are written in the oldest code in the world, the laws of nature. The natural resources of our vast continent are not inexhaustible. But if we will use our riches wisely, if we will protect our wildlife and preserve our lakes and streams, these things will last us for generations to come. Support our local conservation agencies. Thank you. Thirteen Italian airmen, part of the United Nations peacekeeping force in the Congo, were brutally murdered there on Sunday. The former colony has been torn by violence since gaining its independence from Belgium last year. The Italians arrived in the city of Kindu Saturday, in two planes carrying supplies for a Malayan contingent of the UN force. When the planes were spotted from the ground, rumors spread that the aircraft contained Belgian commandos or secessionists. Upon landing, the Italians were overpowered by Congolese soldiers, beaten, and shot to death. Their bodies were dismembered with machetes by a crowd of onlookers and thrown into the Lualaba River. The UN, voicing outrage at the massacre, requested permission today of the Congolese authorities to seal off the area around Kindu and disarm the garrison of more than a thousand soldiers there. It is believed that this permission will be granted. In Seattle today, President Kennedy addressed a convocation at the University of Washington. The university celebrates its 100th anniversary this week. In his speech, the president declared that it was a test of our national maturity to accept the possibility that negotiations on Berlin and other Cold War problems may not lead to either victory or defeat. In short, we must face problems which do not lend themselves to easy or quick or permanent solutions. And we must face the fact that the United States is neither omnipotent nor omniscient, that we are only 6% of the world's population, and that we cannot impose our will upon the other 94% of mankind, that we cannot right every wrong or reverse each adversity, and that therefore there cannot be an American solution to every world problem. These burdens and frustrations are accepted by most Americans with maturity and understanding. They may long for the days when war meant charging up San Juan Hill, or when our isolation was guarded by two oceans, or when the atomic bomb was ours alone, or when much of the industrialized world depended upon our resources and our aid. But they now know that those days are gone and that gone with them are the old policies and the old complacencies. An 11-year-old girl was discovered today by a Greek freighter drifting in the Atlantic on a cork float about 180 miles off the South Florida coast. Terry Jo Duperol of Green Bay, Wisconsin, is apparently one of only two survivors of the sinking of the yacht Bluebell, which her family had chartered for a cruise earlier this month. Terry Jo had been drifting without food or water for 82 hours, seated upright throughout the ordeal because her float was only two by five feet. A rescue helicopter brought Terry Jo to a Miami hospital where Dr. Franklin Verdon, after noting that she had suffered severe sunburn, dehydration, exposure, and shock, said, quote, I think she will make it. I think she will live. The things we have to worry about now are pneumonia and her heart. Her body chemistry is bound to be a little haywire, unquote. The other survivor is 44-year-old Julian Harvey, captain of the Bluebell, who was picked up by an oil tanker three days ago. In the lifeboat with Mr. Harvey at that time was the lifeless body of Terry Joe's sister Renee, seven years old. Mr. Harvey, a decorated World War II and Korean War veteran, stated that the 60-foot yacht had been struck by a squall Sunday evening. He said that after the main mast snapped and a fire broke out, out, he became separated from the others and forced to abandon the yacht alone, stating that he had retrieved Renee's body from the water but had been unable to revive her. Missing and presumed dead are Terry Joe's 14-year-old brother Brian, her parents, Dr. Arthur Duperol and his wife Jean, and Mr. Harvey's wife Mary, who had been appointed cook on the yacht. Mr. Harvey will face further questioning by the Coast Guard in Miami. 
In West Berlin today, British authorities reported the latest in a series of border incidents, the holding of two tourists by East German customs guards for several hours at police headquarters. The guards confiscated the couple's plane tickets to Paris, which they had intended to use today. The couple was told that if they came back with information on the deployment of Allied troops and tanks at Friedrichstrasse and other crossing points, the tickets would be returned. The tourists were flown safely out of Berlin today. Willy Brandt, the mayor of West Berlin, spoke recently about the challenges facing his divided city. West Berlin is not only a problem child of world politics, not only a city confronted with serious difficulties, not only a city divided by a wall of shame and of tears, West Berlin is also an active city, a vital city, which uh, tries to uh, develop this center of economic and cultural activities until one day artificial division of this city and this country may be overcome. In Bonham, Texas today, House Speaker Sam Rayburn died of cancer. He was 79 years old. Mr. Rayburn, who was first elected to Congress in 1913, served longer as both representative and speaker than any man in history. President Kennedy issued a statement of tribute, as did Vice President Johnson, who said of his longtime friend and colleague, quote, the Capitol is a lonely place without him. He was always there when he was needed. His voice and his judgment were heard and respected, unquote. Mr. Rayburn often said that he would rather be Speaker of the House than any 10 senators. He achieved that goal on September 16, 1940, and from that day until this, served as Speaker in every Congress except the 80th from 1947 to 1949 and the 83rd from 1953 to 1955, both controlled by the Republicans. Mr. Rayburn was minority leader for those four years. I'll have more news for you after this message. Now for stabbing pains, sore aching muscles, sprains and strains, comes a new European discovery with remarkable medical proof of relief. It's InfraRub with working warmth. Yes, InfraRub is so effective it's actually been proved in arthritis clinics. Proved to relieve even minor arthritis pains for hours. So imagine the relief InfraRub brings for your ordinary muscular soreness. Listen. As a busy mother with plenty of housework, I get my share of sore, aching muscles. But InfraRub brings me fast, soothing relief. I can work, even enjoy bowling after a busy day. Believe me, InfraRub really works. Proved in arthritis clinics, InfraRub's working warmth radiates relief for muscular pains. Get InfraRub. President Kennedy has settled on measures the U.S. will take to strengthen South Vietnam against communist attacks, attacks that have been steadily increasing in number and severity. The measures, approved today by the National Security Council, closely follow recommendations made by General Maxwell Taylor. General Taylor returned from a fact-finding mission to Southeast Asia two weeks ago. The president's plan does not call for the sending of combat troops at this time. It does call for several hundred specialists in guerrilla warfare and logistics to be sent to advise and train South Vietnamese forces. The U.S. will send helicopters and other special equipment as well. In Beijing today, the official newspaper of the Chinese Communist Party called U.S. aid to South Vietnam, quote, a fresh step in United States imperialist maneuvers to aggravate international tension in all parts of the world, unquote. This charge was made as President Ho Chi Minh of Communist North Vietnam finished a four-day visit to the Chinese capital. He had stopped there on his way home from the Soviet Communist Party Congress in Moscow. Musician Ray Charles was arrested on Tuesday in Indianapolis on a narcotics charge. Detectives found heroin, marijuana, and a hypodermic needle in his hotel room. The blind singer was taken to police headquarters for questioning. Detective William Owen said that Mr. Charles, 31 years old, said that he had been addicted to narcotics since he was 16. Detective Owen described the appearance of the singer's arm as, quote, one of the worst I've ever seen, unquote. Just last month, Mr. Charles had a number one hit with his recording Hit the Road Jack, and last year, his rendition of Georgia on My Mind hit number one as well. In New York General Sessions Court today, the racketeer known as Crazy Joe was found guilty of attempted extortion and conspiracy. The verdict could put 32-year-old Joseph Gallo behind bars for 14 years. Gallo was convicted of trying to extort half the profits of a check-cashing service and three taverns owned by Theodore Moss of Brooklyn. Mr. Moss, 28 years old, testified that Gallo had struck him several times and threatened to put him in a hospital if he refused to accept Gallo as partner. Gallo, with a 
record of 23 arrests and four convictions, was a prime suspect in the 1957 murder of crime boss Albert Anastasia, although no charges were filed. In 1958, Gallo was summoned to Washington to testify before the Senate Rackets Committee. While visiting the office of then-Senate counsel Robert F. Kennedy, Gallo told the future attorney general that his carpet would be excellent for a dice game. The nickname Crazy Joe partially derives from Gallo's temporary placement after a 1950 arrest in Kings County Hospital Center, where he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. In court today, the judge scheduled sentencing for December 21st. Sports after this brief message. Mental illness is no longer hopeless. Act now for prevention and cure. Support your mental health association. The New York Mets announced today that sales of season box seats for 1962, the club's first year in the National League, have already exceeded sales of box seats by the New York baseball giants in their heyday. And the Mets are spreading the wealth, giving today a $1,000 check to Ray Gatto, creator of the prize-winning emblem for the new club. Gatto's design depicts the New York skyline within a baseball, showing a church, the Williamsburg Savings Bank, the Woolworth Tower, the Empire State Building, and the UN Building. The building are colored in the old Dodger blue, while the letters NY appear in the same style and orange coloring as they once did on the caps of the departed Giants. The Giants' old ballpark, the Polo Grounds, will serve as temporary home for the Mets next year, before the team occupies the stadium now under construction in Flushing Meadow. That stadium is expected to be ready for 1963. And that, for this evening, completes our look at the latest news. Thank you for joining us, and have a great day tomorrow. This has been your Evening Report, a roundup of the latest news with Joe Rubenstein.